Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I promised you on the last one when we were doing those Floribunda roses that I had another one of those landscapes with a little fisherman in it. The last one I did several months ago, uh, Fishing the Riffle, uh, I got so many requests to do it, so I thought I'd bring one back. And we're going to study some really great landscape techniques of pushing back a back mountain and how to get some of that uh, that interest back there while still pushing in all of those atmospherics, painting trees, painting waters, painting some rapids, and painting the little figures here. It's going to be a lot of fun. I even added a little dog into this one here. Now, so the reference photo that I have here is actually a combination of a couple of different photos together. I put them into Photoshop and work them and build it all up and then I'm going to change it some more because I'm not real real satisfied with some of the colors so we'll we'll change that but I'll explain that along the way okay for my palette colors this is my standard colors that I put out I did put out two extra that I do on landscape from time to time and especially up into this there's a lot of warm colors up into the front rocks up there burnt siennas burnt umbers which uh, which um, and the medium beiges which I really like so I'm going to add some of those colors to the palette today the rest of the colors that I have here this is my standard what I like to call it uh, um, some of my favorite colors that I work with and work you know I've done over almost 200 videos on the channel here with this particular palette the palette itself is in the video description a listing of all the colors that I use the heritage and then also links where you can uh, get those colors if you want to get them okay everything is in that video description right below the move right below the video here okay all right so and I use the uh, fusion brushes I'm going to start out with a three-quarter inch Normally you see me out here with some of this open medium and I don't have it out here today because I'm going to attack this mostly acrylic. I do have out my extender medium which will slow it down. Um, it also uh, thins the colors so I use it uh, sometimes along the way but most of the painting today will be in acrylic. All right. Okay. So I'm going to start out with using just a little bit of water. I like to paint land. I used to like to paint wet and wet landscapes. I started out with oils and now I just love the quick drying and layering I can do with the acrylics. So I take some Thalo Blue, a touch of the Quinacridone, we'll step down here and we'll lighten this up. I want this slightly to a violet here and I want to get that value up here what I see in the, into this photo up there. Boy that's spot on. <laughs> so, But it's going to dry a little darker so I'm going to put, I lighten it up about a half a value to a full value more. Make sure you have your value scale and stuff here along the line here. So I am up there as a good, I'm right between an eight and a nine. So it'll dry down to about an eight, which is what I want. Now, here on this side, I've drawn this mountain and I have that mountain there. I think I'm gonna take it back maybe to this particular ridge line. So I give uh, a little bit more sky. I'm gonna lighten that up just a touch more. So I give just a bit more sky here into the painting. To me, sky, I love all kinds of landscapes and, and painting all kinds of landscapes with you, but I like them to have a little bit of sky. It makes you feel like it's not completely, you know, caged in. And I paint them all, but I, I do like that. So then I'm just going to add that atmosphere like you see me do in so many paintings. I add a little bit of white back into here and just let that model don't mix it up real well. Just let that model around like that, and that helps us create the atmosphere. We can always revisit that, but that's going to help us there. Now, looking at this back hill, we're going to have atmospherics. Now, here, in, you know, in a, in a real photo, you don't always see the atmospherics. What is atmosphere? As objects leave your central area and they get further into the distance, they actually get more sky color into them. So you can actually add more depth. We can push that back a bit further by using some of this sky here. First, let's make a nice gray. Beautiful grays come from some of that blue and that red. That's going to make some wonderful grays for some of our rocks today. And those rocks are slightly violet, so we could even add a touch of that nice um, quinacridone violet, but any red, any burnt sienna, blue and violet. Uh, sometimes you'll see me in, in a lot of, if I want to get a lot of interest to a painting, I'll go red green. That gives you a whole other type of gray for rocks and just beautiful. And you can just model all of this together. That's the beauty. A, a beautiful landscape will carry a lot of colors 
into it. So, and you will see that that's pretty close. It's, I'm a little bit red, but that's not too bad. I'm gonna actually add water to this here, and then I'm gonna add just a touch of the sky, and we're gonna have some rock faces here. I'm gonna push those in. Now, see, I'm slightly red of that blue, and I'm more like a color right in there, which is pretty, which is okay. Um, I'm gonna lighten this up and blue it just a touch here. And that's also good just to vary your colors. And so I'm gonna set this in first, just kind of really rough here, like this, and right back through these trees. And I'm just gonna push this all in. And we'll drop some of this big stuff right in here. See, I like to, and I'll pull a few horizontals as well, just to get, cause see, I'm getting this color modulation in here, what I call color modulation. Let me come down just a bit here with this easel here so you can see that better so i get this color and this modulation of the color and that is as and one reason why i do like to do acrylic you can see it drying right away and i'll, I'll compare and i think i want to have this more atmospheric some of this gray so i'll just flatten my brush and come back down through this not taking out everything i've, I've already done you know, one of my teachers that I had it always said that once you start have a color on there, don't take it out. <laughs> you know, if you if you need to adjust it, don't take it out. Just change it up, paint over it, leave some of it, and that just gives you even more interest to your final painting. You can even use this light gray that I have over here as a base. It's kind of a nice neutral color, but uh, it will just tap some of that around here, push. And we'll get those nice light broken edges there up against that sky. That's what I want. I'll leave this kind of broken here. We'll cover some of that with trees and stuff. I'm going to come over. Now, before I get going too far over here, um, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to come over to the right side of this and maybe even small down my brush a bit here. Let's go down maybe to an 8 or a 10. This is a 10 Fusion Flat. And let's find that touch more blue, burnt sienna here. Uh, touch of violet, because it is slightly violet. And that's, that's a pretty color in there. Now we're going to want to have some atmospherics to it here as well. So I'm just going to, any of these colors in here is a real shadow. Now here's where my light is to here's where the dark is there. And that's really kind of too much. So let's lighten this up a bit. See what's nice about this onto the palette is you can just, you can see what your light and shadow is here. Let's just add a bit more violet, a bit more blue. Keep it modeled guys, just don't mix it all up real well. That makes a prettier painting here. And just mix up some of this color like this or model up some of this color right here is this. So I've got about a, and down here, right about at perfect six right now, which would dry to a five. And that put that right there, you see it's about the same value. It's a little bit warmer, which I don't mind that right now. So I'm gonna leave that. And I'm just gonna come in here and find some of those broken edges. And sometimes I'll use just a corner of my brush here and we'll put in a larger one, maybe right down here like this and drop some of that color down. This is your first look with some of your shadows here on the side of this hill. And we'll break it all up and do that art thing everywhere. Let's add some of that right down in there. Okay, some of that goes long. Little clumps of it here. I don't try to copy the photo because <laughs> it's, it's actually a hybrid of several different ones, but I do try to uh, uh, just use it for the inspiration. As we come back up over here, we're going to have shadow here. Now I added a little bit more violet. I like that color too. So let's put some of that in there. The the beauty of it when you paint when you're painting landscapes like this is you want to get more atmospheric. You want to get darker as you come up front here. Those of you that paint with me all the time know that. And then you want to, as you're, you're putting this on, is once you have a tone, like I put a tone in there, I kind of like it, I'll travel it. I'll travel the tone. I won't have as much of it because it's a little darker, but I'll travel this tone, you know, around the, uh, around the painting here. So, 
and that works really well. Let's just lighten that back up. Let's get it just a bit bluer, lighten this. Maybe even a touch of medium beige in there as well. We'll put in some of the verticals here right into this area. And I do want to keep some of this uh, kind of soft. Now, another way to do this, you know, as we go back to our palette knife painting, is model this like this and draw that knife down here like this. And the angle at which you use your knife is going to set the whole effect. So I've got this one right here. You can see it's kind of falling down. And so I'll, I'll use that knife. You can put it in. But see, you can get some nice modeled interest right in there like that. And then we can come back and just touch our brush through in a few areas there to... Uh, to add more interest to that, those vertical falls here, the, the vertical cracks and crevices here into these rocks. But the thing is, see, you you don't paint perfect. You you try to keep your your brush moving. You try to keep your colors changing, uh, angles at which you're painting changing here, and that's what's going to give you. The, the best and prettiest look to it. And I'm gonna let some of this dry up and I'll show you the fun part as some of this starts to dry up here. That's gonna be the better part here. Let's even get a touch of that green, green red into some of this. A bit warmer here. Let's put this big fall of rock right down there, here. And use your brush and maybe model some of the lighter color in there. Maybe hit a couple of a couple of horizontals right in there with that. That works. And we're gonna have all kinds of other, you know, lights and darks and colors going in there as well. But you can see these rocks are um, you know, they have a they carry a lot of interest. I'll add some more water here. So I want this to kinda it's not quite there, it's almost there, dry up. And I'll show you over here what you're going to do is you're just going to take some of this lighter color and I'll find other rocks and just pull down like this and see as I hit those edges like that see it starts to create the other you know like a little uh, different kind of rock face there so I'll look at one and say yeah I kind of like that one there I'll pull that rock face down kind of what I'm seeing there and then use the corner of my brush here to break it there break the angles of it and this starts to build your rock and you can have a a more of a, a, a slightly darker tone or what we call a half tone in there half tone would be between the light and dark and put in a slightly receding different plane in there so if i want to put like an edge of a receding plane of one right in there like that and then just grab some other light rock right there Hit those edges with that and so you can see you start building these rocks here and it really doesn't you, you know you look at the photo and you go oh my gosh how am I gonna paint all that but doing it like this the impressionistic way of it goes pretty quickly and so right in through here we'll hit a few more little highs and lows of lights and darks we'll then take lighten up our and it works the best if you let your colors dry up a bit because then it'll drag like this okay that's why I'm using it with the acrylic and water right now I want this to dry up so I want it to drag a bit which will give me more of the highs and lows of the rocks that we're going to do here and uh, as we go putting some of that in here and we'll We'll make some other, I'll, I'll go to a smaller brush too and come through and make some other slight adjustments. Now, let's go, let's, before we get too wrapped up into that, I like to move kind of quick and, you know, we're, we're doing what we call blocking in, getting colors. I don't want to get too wrapped up in details right now. I want to set the effect with the colors, then come back and we use what's called broken color and half tones to, to uh, shape it up a bit. Look at that color there. It's pretty close. This is just yellow oxide and some of those grays here. So I want to put in there, but I should probably lighten this just a bit because it's going to dry down and I want to make it more atmospheric. A little bit of blues and stuff here. 
I use suggestions of the colors that I see in the painting. I don't copy them here. Unless, it's a, unless I, I see a lot of things in the painting that I really like, you know, I won't, uh, I won't generally copy everything. So we'll push some of that in, okay? And uh, we'll just model this around. Model means just to tap it and push it, and it's, you're really working with unmixed color. I don't like blending. I don't consider myself a blender. I'm a tone painter. So I like to put on tones here. So let's go up with this. We'll drop some of that. See, we'll let some of that rock come through and let this kind of fade away in there. It's grasses and stuff growing up onto the, up into the rocks there. Let's get some of that beautiful gray out here again. Blues, burnt siennas, some of my violets here. Some of our medium or light gray into that. That's pretty as well. All that makes beautiful grays here. And then, so we'll use that with some of these yellows as we come in here. Boy, that's just about that tone that's right in there. That darker tone right there. And we'll tap some of that around. We'll, again, model it here. Model, this is modeling. Don't, so that when it comes off your brush, you get some different highs and lows. And I'm going to want to touch more, maybe some burnt sienna into it as I come down this way here. Here And see, I use my brush in all kinds of different directions, especially when you're painting bushes and plants and stuff like that. You know, you use your brush in all kinds of directions. When you're painting rocks, you usually give them, rocks normally have a, a bit of a fall or a, 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 an angle that they will stay with. So, you know, you put them in according to that angle. Let's drop this lighter bit right in here, right up in there, and we'll let some of that, see, I'll, so I've got, I capture this light to that, and that's all I'm doing, I'm not capturing it perfect, and I see a little more burnt sienna right down in there that I like, so I'll just kinda, I use my brush into the flat here, so I don't uh, lose all the calligraphy. This makes more of a scratching. This makes more of a softer, of a, a you know technique of it. And I like more of the scratching technique generally when I'm painting like this here. So we'll grab some of that, drop that in. This could and see I could take some of this lighter gray or this lighter gray I have right over there and come right back up in here and set a light rock. Kind of work those together like that, see? And uh, work those edges and I'll start to refine this rock here. There's a more of a pull down one right down in here. I'll grab some of that, see? And this light, maybe a bit of that yellow with that. See if I can kind of emulate that right in there. Push hard and lift the pressure so it drags out here. Just like that, tap those edges so it's not a perfect streak, and you'll get you'll capture some of that edge or that look of it. And you can come back a bit of dark, change the color. I'll be doing this a lot, changing some of those tones in a big full painting. This is just a small, nice study for us to paint together. Um, but in a big full painting. I would change those many, many times, those tones many, many times and go back and back and back. Usually I would consider this the first layer. I will do about four layers and most of the time getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I like what Helen Van Wyck, who was a painter for you know many years, I watched her when I was younger and um, she always say, you know, start it with a broom and finish it with a needle. And that was just amazing to me. It was just start out with these big, huge brushes and then just go in and add the final little touches. And it always seemed to work, always worked. Beautiful painter. Let's put some light gray maybe up here like this to kind of capture that feel of that sloping area right there. And we'll grab a bit of this right up in there like that. And uh, then a touch darker, maybe some violet blues and some burnt siennas here. Touch darker, grayer. That one's really quite a bit more purpley 
and dark right out over here. You can see how it's getting, see how the shadows there are lighter and they're darker back up over here, more power. That's the atmospherics. So I'll just capture that. I'm just gonna add a little water. And so I will in this area, see all the dirty color that just comes out of my brush. It does, just a dirty brush does a lot of the painting for you too, you know. So it, uh, and then we can just model some of those colors and hit that edge there. Light in, in this is coming from back around the corner out this way. So we definitely want to get lighter back over there. And I can probably push that a bit lighter uh, over there. Let's warm that too. A little bit of yellow and some white into some of those grays. So as I put out some of these other colors, see, I'll, I'll generally test some of these lights and darks there to see if that light, you know, it's got to diminish and travel across there onto this side. So, but it'll, depending on how much work, now see when you look at that, that those of you paint with me, that's camera one, it's eight feet away. And you look at that, I'm looking at my monitor right here, shows you what you're looking at in that camera. And you can see, generally, I've, I've captured like the impression. And what an art impressionist does is we squint down our eyes and we see if we see the lights and darks about the same. And so when I squint down, I see that about the same. I see I could have a little bit more right down in here, down in this particular area here to build up that area right there so I could I can come in and add and then once you once you get those lights and darks and the amounts of the lights and darks that you want to have then you can come in and start building your uh, uh, your half tones and your tones that change up the color a little bit but that starts it now when I go to do half tones what I do is I'll take some of those colors I'll lighten them up I'll change them over maybe even add some dark light yellow to this change over some of the colors that you use don't use them fully just you know tap a little bit of that around up there so see that little light I'm seeing just a tiny little bit of light right in there and then I'll sink that light in maybe a little burnt sienna and some green into that and I'll paint back into it like that see and that'll add a lot of interest to it so this is what I I talk about what we do is we set the foundation then we come in and we break it up like this we break the colors up we call it broken color so we break the colors up and how much you do as an artist is you know how much details and stuff you do in your painting which is wonderful so you know you can start adding some of those colors I can put a touch of yellow green right into there and see I'll just start dragging some of that across. I love these brushes for doing this I just have to lay the brush down and it'll do a lot of the work see I can drag over some of that gray and start putting some of that model color in there and I can start building it to look like that. Does that make sense? So that's some work that we gotta do and then how much you're gonna do is gonna be dependent upon you. I'll do some, I'll do some. Now, let's come down here. One of the lightest yellow colors is right down here, which is really what I want. This, uh, this light and right next to the dark. That's something that, and I did that in this photo on purpose there, is one of the things that uh, Louis Ashton Knight, who was a, a beautiful, and his father, uh, Daniel Ridgway Knight, were both artists, and he was a 19th century Victorian landscape painter. He was an expatriate American, and he always set that real light right next to a real dark, right into a into a vanishing point area that draws you into the painting. So it's called drawing you into the painting. Um, other impressionists, like... Uh, um, Richard Smith and stuff did it as well, and I just love their work and how they did that. So I'm gonna set some, grab some of my brighter yellows, a little bit of light. I'm gonna pick out what value that is. Right now I am up here about an eight, and that eight, I just tap that right in there. See, that's just right about perfect. So it will dry down a touch, so I'll lighten it just a bit. Acrylics dry down, and I'm gonna come right into that area. There's gonna be a little tree here. I'm gonna come right into that area and push that light. Now, I'm just gonna model it in there like that because coming out of that, I wanna drop down to yellow oxide and some grays, and we'll just draw that right around there. 
So I see some of that yellow oxide and gray coming along here, right like that. Then I see some burnt siennas, reds. Let's grab some burnt siennas. Maybe burnt sienna, a little bit of green. We'll grab some of those colors right in there. Most of what the painting is, is for you to be able to see what it is that you're seeing in the painting, grab the colors that work with it and try to grab those colors efficiently. But with good impressionism, guys, you can make mistakes. That's the beautiful thing about it. You can make, I'm gonna gray this down, put this in. You can make mistakes and still make a nice painting. You don't have to, don't get wrapped up in being precise. Just try to get it close here. We'll grab a bit of movement here with that. And uh, I think I'm gonna intensify that, bring up a little bit more paint right in there, that yellow and light, maybe even just a dot or two more of pure yellow. Here, that'll give me a, a lot of interest right in there, like you see right over there. And your brushwork, see, I'm just pushing it and tapping it. Your brushwork does a lot for you. Let's take a nice yellow-green, pine green and a little bit of yellow oxide here. Maybe a touch of the burnt sienna. And uh, let's work some of those colors. Yeah, that's not too bad. We'll work some of those colors. And again, I like to work the brush flat. And... Uh, and I'm just trying to grab the area. So that area is coming in there. You see a bit more green, even some uh, softer blue-green. So we can add some of that, maybe even a bit of beige into that blue-green. I like beige into the blue-greens here. I'll preserve some of that other green. That green's a little bit too bright. So how would you tone it? Well, a couple of different ways. You can use any red. That's it. This would warm it. This would cool it. And I'm looking at that and they're really kind of warm. It's really still kind of warm. It's up in the sunlight. So I'm going to gray it down here with a bit of the Napla red light. If I was in a shadow, I would use this. And that'll gray that down. And see, that's a better color for it right in there. We'll add just a few marks of that in that area there. Okay, and then... Uh, Let's just model some of this together and add some more color. Try to get rid of all the light spots of your board. And that's one thing I never did. I never told you the size of the board, huh? And some of you are going, David, tell us the size of the board. It's a 14 by 18. This is a 14, 14 inches this way, 18 inches this way. I'm just using a hard board today. And it's also known as a masonite panel. And uh, it's one that I had that was available. And then I just painted it with uh, some white. And uh, I used also a little bit of the canvas prep medium. I like it to be matte so that it, it grabs the paint and sticks. I don't like to use gessos or anything like that. I don't use that in any of the prepping of any of my paintings. Um, I like the paint. I like to put paint on top of paint. Gesso has vinyl in it and your brush slides on it. A little bit too easy for this. I like to brush to grab. That's what gives me all of like these little broken edges is uh, the paint grabbing into paint. So I don't use, I haven't used gessos in proof, probably 30 years. So I'm going to add a bit more of that lighter green in here. Just kind of breaking some of that up a bit. Here, let's get some yellow and some burnt siennas here. Let's just drop that right in there. Just really quickly, see? Now you can also, you've seen me in, in other paintings, go in and attack some of these areas here with, um, a, um, you know, a paper towel. I'm working a paper towel with colors. And you can do that, especially in an area that's not important. And it, it all depends on how much time you're gonna put on there. But here's another way is, let me just take some of this yellow down that I really like here, yellow and some white right over here. Is it all, I'll take like water into a paper towel. I'll grab these colors right in here. See, that models it right away, see? And you can just pull those colors around, especially down here where I'm gonna have this light. And you can just lightly base them in like that. And see, as you start to put that in, you're starting to capture some of that light effect in there. Now, being heavier paint back here, I want that heavier paint. But into the back back there, let's even add a little beige and gray in there. Into the back back here, I can certainly do it like that and, and let those colors go to the back. And 
I will probably want, we'll let this dry up a bit more too, but a little bit of blue, a little bit of sky coming right back up through here as well. It's going to help us with our our atmospherics, which is what I want. Some of that atmospheric tone right back there coming back up through here. And then we'll let the color slowly start to come here. And uh, it'll look like we know what we're doing. We're softening it out and bringing it forward, okay? All right. So, yeah, lots of ways to do it. And as you get up here, you could even use your palette knife and put some of that together. But you want to get some of this nice modeling of color here and uh, let it do some different things. And then we'll come back in and we, when we start to really uh, define some of our areas, like it's right up in there, and you can almost see some of the beige in there. We'll put some beige with the lighter yellow and grab some of that right in there, right down into that green there. Just use your brush. This, this is called scumbling, the light color here. Just gently going over the edge of that surface there. And that puts that color in there. And let's push a little different, change the color a bit. A little different, let's just grab some of that coming up in a little bit more light, maybe. A little green, a little more light. Let's hold the brush kind of flat. Just pull some of that up here like this. Let that granulate. Now see, on the, this is like the third time through on this area here. Look at the interest now that you get by doing that. And you start to pick up what that looks like over there. Hold your brush. Hold your fusion brush very flat. And let it granulate. This is called granulation. Let it granulate out. Now this is a little bit wet. You can see the difference. And a little bit wet, it smears. And over here, where it's dry, it, it's, it grabs. I mean, and see, it, it breaks up the color. It gives you that, that nice broken color, which is what I want. So up here, let's go all the way to the top. Let's put a little green in this too. So right up through here, see, this will drag and grab really nice. See that broken color? And you can just see it lightly coming up over some of the grays of the rocks there. And uh, that's what starts to really make it pretty. And you really start, to, and you can look at that camera there, you can really start to grab that, uh, that look of the, you know, the painting. Now, in, in the painting, I'll go through this another time. And, you know, first what I'm going to do is just move forward. I'm going to keep moving, keep moving forward here. And uh, so we don't run out of time. I'll just keep moving here. I'm going to just toss in some more grays. We'll get close. And then I'll uh, put in, uh, you know, we'll co I'll come back and put in some more stuff. Now, we're going to head. So this is up into my light. And that dried pretty similar to, to that right there. But uh, I may want it a bit more um, here as I get going, so I'll have to maybe take a look at that. Let's grab some of that pine green, and I'm going to uh, grab uh, cool it down with some quinacridone. The darkest color you can make is pine green and that red violet. Quinacridone won't be quite as dark, but right in here around the band, right in that area, right in here is going to be some of those pine trees. And I just want to lightly put in some of that dark color. So what I'm seeing is some of that light to dark right in there. There. And we'll just grab some of that. And I want to keep this very loose because I still want to, I want to keep the edges very loose and very um, painterly. Let's yellow that a bit right up over here. Just grab some yellow. And we can add a few other little touches right between all of that. Right up here, the ideas of maybe some more trees. I just use the corner of the brush, just tapping the corner of the brush. You've seen me do it with a small little flat. I do it with a big flat. I do it with a filbert. You know, I do all different kinds of ways. I just want to see what those colors will look like in there. And then as we come up this hillside, we're going to have a few more. The hardest thing for me, I'm a left brain painter. The hardest thing is to make them all different. I tend to make them all the same. So that's just a habit of the left brain. We just want to line them up like little soldiers here. So I'll push one right in there. 
here. Some of those little touches, like those could be up there on the back hill. Smaller, little change the tone a bit here. Change the color, change the tone. Right up there will be some here. And these aren't done. These are just, this is just to give me a little impression of some of the, and the trees. Now we also want to use good, um, what we call linear perspective. So we'll have bigger trees. That's what's going to help us with our perspective. When you see a big tree there and then a medium sized tree right there, you know it's uh, that other one is further back. So we want to be able to grow that further back. Let's come right in here and add a few of those right in there. We'll add some nice uh, horizontals here. Then we'll come in and add some uh, nice, excuse me, add nice verticals, then add horizontals. I guess I should probably get it straight here just to give the impression of those particular trees. And of course, we're going to add lights to them. So, and we can do some of that right now, light yellow green pine green and some yellow oxide and light right in through there right like that just touches of that and uh, touches of other greens and you know you'll read them in different parts of this mountain you'll read some of that stuff so we just make some impressions of them and they're going back back there you know so it just gives us an idea, a working idea of where we are in the painting. We want to keep going, though. We, the thing is, when you're, when you're doing it like this, you want to just keep going. Let's grab some of that. Now, I love this color in here. Let's, let's grab some of that medium beige and that burnt sienna and a little bit of green. Beautiful color. And see, that's just right about that. Can I put a dollop of that right there? That's right about what that color is in there. And... Uh, just right along like that. And I like it when like little bits of burnt sienna come out in that. And if I, if I use that, I can streak in some yellow, you know, put in some of those colors. We kind of went right through our tree so we get a chance to paint that again here. That's kind of nice. And sometimes I'll leave it, you know, on the photo, that, that hillside just kind of blends right there into the trees. And, uh, you know, we could bring it out a bit more if we want. There's some gray rocks in there, and it's starting to head cool, so I'm going to set some of my gray, cooler gray right up here that I can just need a bit more blue. A sapphire would be a good, those of you that are beginners, sapphire would be a real good color to add to this palette. You see me add it in so many other things. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You see me, sapphire would be a good one to add because you can make some beautiful mid-tone, mid-value grays with sapphire really easy. Sa with burnt siennas and reds and everything we're doing, it's a lot easier to handle than uh, thalo blue and some of those grays. So let's uh, just model a touch of the burnt sienna in there. I like to leave uh, some of those streaks because that gives the direction of that little hill there, see? Now let's let's just restate, since I took some of that out, we'll restate uh, that tree here, right down there by the water's edge, right over there like that. One of this right down, right down into the hillside there a bit. Just to, <clears throat> and we'll do some more. I mean, this is this is just our first look. I'm going to come in and add some more and break some edges and do some stuff. This will just um, give you a first look. But see, one of the things is like you go, okay, Dave, the tip of that tree there is not very good. <laughs> see, I don't worry about that at this point. But uh, what I'll be able to do is once that's completely dry, see, I'll just take a value, not even close. I mean, it just has to be close. Model it up into my brush here and paint back into that tree, the edge of that tree. And I'll paint my edges back and forth. That's the, the secret. And when you start to read other, you know, wonderful masters in the art, they say the secret to painting more than anything else is uh, edges, is working your edges. And 
it's so very true, guys. It is so very true, the edges. And see, so I'll control that edge, not only positive, which we mean with the tree color, but I'll control it negative, which we mean the background that's around it. So I'll be tapping in and, you know, adding a few little greens and stuff like that right into that area, controlling that edge, looking at that edge, controlling that edge, and... Uh, that's what's going to give me more, even more interest. And I can control slopes and stuff like that if I decide to do that in there. It's just a whole heck of a lot of fun. But I'm constantly thinking when I'm doing that of the edges, the edges of things that I'm painting. Is it a blurry edge? Is it a nice, you know, found edge? You know, thinking of those, those particular edges. Now, before I leave this area, I'm going to come in here with just a bit of grayed violet, blue violet shadow mountain color here. A little cool here. Maybe even toss in just a bit of that here. Let's see what that is. Could be just a touch darker here. And we'll add just a few more shadows here. Um, <clears throat> so we have that big one there. We'll add just a bit more now that's a little blue for that, but it's closer to what the mountain is. Could have a touch more violet, and even add a little bit of green, which helps get rid of some of that blue here. And uh, yeah, see that's a better gray there. And then we'll pull down just a bit, a couple of fraction marks there pulling down there we'll push that one in this one can be broken up a touch more and see see that fracturing I get now that the paints dry see it just makes it like rocks there you can pull that over and just fracture that down and vary the the type and the length of the of the pull that you're doing with your brush and that will um, help you then you can come in and add smaller dark touches, little blue touches and stuff. That's what the impressionists would do is we just break, look at our edges here, maybe fracture them off a bit. You know, we want very uh, broken, what we call broken edges, broken color, broken edges and stuff there. And so you can see there in building that, we start to really get a, a pretty good look there. Now, but let's keep Let's keep going. We've got a lot to do on this painting and stuff that I want to show you. So let's come into some of what I want. I want this into the shadow. So right down in here, I want some of my darker color. So I'm going to grab some of my blue and my uh, red violet. This is one of the darkest colors we can make on the painting. I'm also going to add a little green, which will tone it down just a bit. And right in here, right along the edge of what that water is going to be. This is where I really want the viewer to come right in here. I'm going to push down and I'm going to let sometimes the green, sometimes the violet come out a little different as I pull across. I know it's hard for you to see and the camera can always pick that up, but it's going to pick up some of that deeper shadow color right in there. I'm just going to add some water to this to thin this for just a moment. And boom, right like that. We'll let that shadow. We'll do some. Uh, we'll do some uh, reflections into the water there. We'll pull down here. There goes my little guy, but that's okay. Now, as it comes back, and you look into here, this uh, and into this photo and stuff here is a little bit more violet, a little bit lighter, a little bit more violet as it's coming, kind of out of the shadows there. And I'm going to do this with multiple colors because I want a lot of interest and stuff in here. But so I'm just going to pull some of this across right now. This is just going to give me something to uh, to put some color on. And I don't like to work the rapids and stuff like that too much wet into wet. I know there's a lot of people like to paint with the oils. And I did for years as well. But I like to now work these colors in dry layers. And uh, it's uh, it works a lot better for the things I like to do. Let's change that up just a touch blue here. 
And I'll, again, like everything else, I'll go over several times. But I want to set in the, the feeling of, uh, of the water here. So it comes out and across. It's going to come into this, this violet right into this little area because he's in the shadows, so just a touch into the shadows here. And there's going to be a little dog right there. It's going to come out this way just a bit. Down into the... I'm probably going to go to my big brush now, three quarter inch. We'll warm this up. We'll get some of the reflection warms of some of the colors from our rocks and stuff like that because water is the color of everything around it. So we'll warm this up right in here as it gets to that warmth. So it's going to be really it's picking up the colors of the, the rocks and stuff around there. And there's some beautiful uh, burnt sienna and green here. We'll add some of that streaked in here. Try to just model that around. It gets a touch warmer yellow, maybe even some beige to it. Right over here towards the shore. It's picking up. See all the colors, the reflecting colors of everything around it there. And uh, yeah, that's going to it's going to work. Let's get a bit more ba uh, burnt sienna green. Right. Just kind of pull that. There's going to be a light to dark, a shadow and light break of that right in there. Let me uh, go up with this just a bit. So, and, you know, we'll have some of those nice darks, a bit of the violets in here. So I'll just push some of those violets into here. Now all this it gets all this is just your first what we call blocking in the color. So I step back and I look at it and look at that model, and you got to see okay yeah I I could use a bit more green and stuff in there, um, but it's it's getting a little bit of the look. It's getting closer. I don't try to I don't try to capture it. You know I always learn something that from some of my teachers I always say, sneak up on your technique. Sneak up on how you paint this. Don't don't jump right in because, uh, you know, if something's off, it can really throw your eye off quite a bit and, and uh, you'll lose perspective for it. So you sneak up on it, little bits. Don't expect it to be perfect with its first one or even two layers. Now let's go back to that light sky. Back here, violets lights and very violet here some quinacridone some blue let's get that it could go a bit lighter so we're going to get that right up in here we'll just walk that right up into this water here right around my rocks here i'm going to have some rocks up in the front all the way to the edge even though there's bushes and stuff there i'll take it all the way to the edge there and we'll just streak this in. This is why I like it, so it won't blend too much after that starts to dry. I'll just streak that color in just like that. So as I come to this edge right here like this, I'm just gonna lift the pressure on my brush and just stroke it through like this. And that is what takes those colors together. They're not blending together. I'm setting the blue right on top of the other colors here. They look blended. It's what we call optical blending. Your eye is blending it because how far away you are with it. And uh, that's just going to help set some of that in. Now you can see, I, when you, after I've got this on here, you can see, yeah, I could go, um, you know, a bit uh, more of a, a green. I'm going to rinse that blue out because it's still heavy in my brush. Could go a bit more burnt sienna green here in uh, that front up here right up and through here yeah burnt sienna green a little bit more green could have just a tiniest tiniest touch of blue into that here and let that if I get too much streaking I lift the, the angle of my brush so that it starts to uh, um, smooth it out a bit this really granulates it. This really smooths it out. So I'll just look at that. I like some of those colors going in there like that. Um, 
and get some of that violet kind of color back out here. Just, you see, let those let those colors kind of work in there. It's just, and it's a foundation. It's the foundation of the, of the color that we're going to use everywhere in this painting. So it sets that. Now, let's get that uh, burnt sienna, some red and blue here. Nice dark. Nice, nice, nice dark. Heavy blue here. That's going to be the dark shadows here of our rocks up against the edge and I kind of did a little sketching of some shadows there. We want those shadows to kind of come together. This one's going to come down here. This little guy's going to pop off against some of that. Big deep shadow here down this side. Little cracks and crevices of shadows stuff there. And so that's going to help set that, and it's going to help bring it uh, this part forward too against that light sky shadow. Shadows come forward. Let's model this with some of the greens and burnt siennas, and we'll just. And I want to use a lot of paint here. You can see though, it's kind of that transparency. See the different colors coming off of my brush. Now that's very important, and. You know, if you're following true, um, you know, a la prima and painting, you know, uh, we tend to paint shadows more transparent and the highlights more opaque. So leaving some of that transparency right like that coming through is beautiful in that shadow and it does a lot of painting for me. Even though it's a little, this is a little bit more violet, I would probably leave that because that's a pretty good look. Let's just... Let's actually add some water and thin that out right up here. Do the same kind of thing. Some of these rocks up here. Just kind of grab their mark here. Of where some of those shadows would be here. Now that, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. This is all kind of a bump here. See, some of that. You just push that edge. See a lot that can that can actually do a lot of your painting for you. You know when you just use that. That's the one reason why you look down here at the palette. Don't don't work your palette too much. Don't play your palette because that really does a does you a disservice as you're trying to uh, you know get some of the. Um, colors in you know you want those colors to come off and model you know a little differently let's get the let's come back up here let's look at that yellow green that's up there grab some yellow some green some beige maybe a bit of this shadow color because it's cooler so a bit of the violet because it's in shadow and let's just pull that right across here now since this will be in this side even though it's in shadow it is kind of a light I would generally do those more opaque so I'd come back again we'll do that a bit more opaque let's just pull a little more color and you know a real quick landscape painter boy that's not too bad right there that's just doing a lot of it but I like to uh, paint a little bit more into my landscapes than when I first started out and so I'll put in some more I'll put in some of that other shadow right in there just grab some of this shadow color and just start sketching around we want to get rid of these light colors these light areas of the of the board here are called holidays it's where your paint took a holiday. <laughs> it's called hol it's actually called holidays I was like no you're kidding me when I first heard that and no, it's very, they're very true. Very. Let's just drop some of that in there. Right there. See, this is what we want. That light right up against the dark here that's going to create uh, a bit more uh, the illusion of space. Let's get some of that uh, violet blue kind of a gray rock color in there. It's... Uh, that's that rock color right in there. And we'll let some of that come through here. Let's get a bit of beige in there, but not so much to warm it up, just to gray it up a bit. Just some touches and marks of it there. There we go. 
just to say we did it. I do, you know, I do like what John Singer Sargent said all the time, paint with as large a brush as you can with that and because that just that causes you to use all different kinds of angles of the brush and everything and it really does work really well. So I'm right in there. Let's model that color a touch different here. So add a few more different tones to it so it comes out different and you hit it again. And you're going to want to work on getting, so I, even, I don't even mind that blue coming out there. But you're going to want to work on getting rid of these little light spots that is going to damage the effect if we're not careful. So we'll work on getting rid of those here. Little colors in between here. See, you could do that, pull through, and that'll just look like a little rock face there. You know, and I, I just so like this. I mean, there's a lot of uh, beautiful, beautiful realists out there that just do so much, um, you know, work, and they make it absolutely real. And we're, what, we're 56 minutes into this painting. And we're capturing a pretty nice painting, I think, uh, for what we're doing by uh, and, and keeping it kind of quick as well, you know. Um, yeah, this uh, I I used to for years. I was such a realist, but it just took so long. You're tacking it with a small brush and everything. You make something that's really real, and I'm not saying anything bad against that. It's just that now in my position, I'm like I like brush strokes, calligraphy, movement. I like it to feel like a painting, and uh, but when I you know in those years, I wanted it to be just like a photograph. Now I'll, I want it to be a, like a painting. Yeah, we all kind of evolve, I think, you know, as artists. We are, our, our likes and dislikes, I'm not the same person I was years ago. So let's put that in there. Let's just grab just a touch or so of that right back out there. Just put that color in there. We have these big trees that are going to come up here onto that side here. And those are, that'll work, I think. But uh, let's go, let's grab this one. It's a burnt sienna right into, I mean, not burnt, but medium beige right into some of these grays here. And then we'll have some burnt siennas, I think, as well here. And notice I'm, I'm just modeling up these colors here, getting some differences. And I want that not quite so, so green. Got a little greenish tone in there. Here we go. And... Let's see where that is. That could be a bit warmer, a bit more beige. So that's a good base. Let's take some beige right over here. And we'll just make that big kind of mark of that. Now that's just a, a, a little too mixed. I worked it on the palette a little, you know, too long, I think. I'm going to push that brush down because everything in that brush is really mixed. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush, grab some light, Let's come over here with a bit of yellow into that. And uh, it's super wet, so this will blend a bit. So I'm going to have to come back on this after this starts to tack up. But I'll get s some additional interest here just by modeling some of those colors together here real quick. And uh, I do want to capture that light plane. And then there's kind of a burnt sienna plane there first. So let's, cap before we leave that, let's capture that lighter plane right down through there. Capture some of that. You can't, see how it blends really easy? I don't want it to to blend. So that's why I love to do this. See, that's a, a real blended as opposed to that real draggy look right up there. So, and that's because it's so wet. That's why I like to do the acrylics and let them dry. It's a different look. So I'll just be careful there. And a little burnt sienna, maybe some of these greens and stuff into that burnt sienna right up in here. Break that rocky edge there. Tap some of that around. Bit of that gray in there. See, that's the broken color of it. You'll get some of that gray, some of those other colors right around in here. We'll pull down. This will be a lot easier once this is dry. It'll be a lot easier. 
and we're going to take some of it, and sometimes I'll do that right now, and I'm just going to do it right here with this, is right down below into the water there, I'm just going to push a little bit of that color, which will be the reflection of that rock, and then I just blur out the edges there, like that, and that just helps you see it just, uh, you know, a little in that, in that particular area. So, we have some of the trees to put in here, some of the rocks to put in here. I'm just going to come in here and, and model in some of these trees, get some of those areas in some of these rocks right up in uh, this area here. We'll go up a bit more here. And then I'll, uh, I'll we'll come back and, because we're at an hour, so we'll come back and I'll show you through a uh, another you know, another run of colors and we'll put the little figure in and stuff like that. So I'm just going to take some greens and some yellows and I'm just going to use small little brush strokes right in through here and, and impart some of that color in there. And oh, let me just show you, as you go around the corner up over here to the water, now if you're following somebody, a really great painter like Lewis Ashton Knight or Daniel Ridgway Knight, they would go back to the light color of the sky. Uh, this photo here, you see it because it's just not quite completely in light. So you see it's slightly darker and so a little violet and some of the mountain colors and stuff are in there. So let's just push in this around the corner color of the water here. And uh, we'll leave that rock kind of there. So the water's going to come around the corner, picks up all of these lovely greens and yellows. And that's all I do is I look, I'm not trying to, you know, capture the color completely. I'm just trying to capture the effect of, uh, you know, these colors. That's what I love. I love color. And see, this is what I like. I'll drag that right there into the blue like that and just, and see, it just, it creates a shimmer of it because this blue is all dry. It creates a shimmer of it which is fantastic. It's a lot better than just blending it. You just, it's all with the pressure of your brush. You know, you've got to learn the pressures of your brush and you can do fantastic things with acrylics. You know, the scumbling technique, the pressures here. We'll just drop this whole area right in there and uh, just take some of these rock colors right out here, push it together there. Like that as that water is going around the bend there. And uh, that shadow could be a bit more dark and pulled down right in there. We'll take care of all that. We'll go in and specifically paint some of that area in there with you. So you can see that. I'm going to want some brighter little green bushes and stuff here right along the shoreline there. So, boom, we'll just... Just block that in real quick, just like that. And we'll turn that all into fantastic stuff with our next layer, okay? So give me a minute. I'll block that in. I'll block in the rocks up here. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll paint the little figure and start some of the other little detail. And, you know, I've got some more work and stuff to do everywhere. But, you know, you don't need to see all that. But this will give you an idea. So give me just a second. And through the magic of video, I'll be back in just one second. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, I just uh, put in just quickly some different greens, some burnt siennas and yellows and, uh, you know, it's cooled off just a few layers with a touch of red violet and stuff like that. I haven't put in any of the small details there. I'll let that kind of talk to me, tell me whether I want to do it after I paint my figure and stuff like that. Um, I did lighten this up one time after it's dry, and you can see the more model color that you get when it's dry. It's pretty nice. And I painted the rocks down here, three planes, a light plane, a receding plane, and a shadow plane, just with some of the rock colors that I have up there. Plus, I'll let sometimes a little bit more burnt sienna and stuff come out okay so let me make sure we can get up there i'm going to add just a couple of small areas here before i get to the figure and i'm going to um adjust the colors in here before i get that figure before we go paint the figure some of those colors have to be a little close because we don't want to do too much adjustment to that figure i want to paint him very casual but uh, first i want to put in these trees now the pine trees over here you're on the shadow side so um you know, you, you're you're basically looking at cool colors. Now, I want to do them not, uh, I'm going to use some pine green, some red violet. This is going to be really cold, 
really cool. I'm going to gray it just a bit, even with some of the gray. Sometimes I'll, I'll um, even add uh, sky color and stuff to it. I'm going to use my number six. This is my old. You can see it doesn't even have a chisel to it anymore. <laughs> and all the paints off of this. this. This one has painted hundreds and hundreds of pine trees for me over the years. I like it because it doesn't do any edges perfectly. And I'm going to just kind of draw down and just use kind of the, the what's left of the corner of the, the brush here a bit and put in a couple of the the trees that I want, just the idea of the trees here. Let's go a little higher with that one. And uh, down here onto the sides and then we and make sure you pull them down different lengths into that hillside there. And uh, maybe one more kind of right in here. The thing is you do them different uh, different heights and stuff, you know. Sometimes, you know, in real impressionistic ones, I'll break it and tap a little bit up at the tops of those. That just gives a, another little broken edge. Then we just want to, we're impressionists, so we just want to, uh, you know, don't go back and forth equally on each side. These are, you know, I mean, pine trees that grow into the high mountains and stuff, they usually have a windswept side and a side. Sometimes they're heavier on the, um, you know, on the lee side, or the, the side that doesn't get all the wind, and then they're really thin on the wind side. So they start slightly up, and then they start coming down. And uh, I just want to get very uh, loose with it. I don't want to be perfect with it at all. Just loose. I'm going to change the tone just a bit, a bit more gray here. I'm not really thinking of shadows yet. I'm thinking of just shapes here. And bury them a little heavier side here and they will also be heavier on the sunny side you know if you at least all the pine trees in our house uh, are always sunnier on the I mean heavier on the sunny side because they get all the light we'll just push this out a bit and, and then they start to fall down down through here and we're going to get real heavy down in uh, down in through here now see right now they just start looking like little soldiers so I've really got to loosen them up quite a bit let's take some more water here loosen these up a bit get some more colors and more fill-ins into here let's take some pine green let's just do some pine green maybe a bit of yellow just a few touches of that in here as well as you pick up highs and lows, lights and darks of these colors here. Just a few touches of those right up there. Maybe even with some of the yellow as it's reaching up towards the sky up here, they'll get hit of that green with the yellow in it. You can see how that starts to fill them in some more. And I'm going to go higher, I think. I'm going to cool this down just a touch. I'm going to go higher up here, right up here. Put a bigger, more powerful one right up there. I think that'll be better. Let's put a touch of brighter green. Change the green. Don't always use that yellow oxide or something. Maybe a touch of this light in there, especially up at the top where that sun is hitting it. Sun's coming in this way, so it'll hit some of that. That'll be better. And um, we have another, we're going to kind of, I got it down as a almost a straighter line here, so I want to, as it's coming down, just model all these colors on my brush right here. I got to kind of, right, so I just want to come off here and down this into this a bit. There we go, down like that, filling in that tree. And uh, then we're gonna put that, um, another one slightly cooler right in there. So you see how I do this. This is, uh, don't need to spend all day doing this kind of stuff. And we'll just tap and push here, get that one out there. And there, like that, kind of fill in that area there. 
It's nice I got it over a little bit too far left, but that's okay. It's my painting. <laughs> it's okay. And I'll put a touch of the lighter green hitting on that one, just a touch. There, let's just hit. I like to carry color when I make a tone, and if it looks too different than what I already have there, I'll do it, you know, carry it around. And I'm going to cool this green off, push some of that darker, cooler color in here as well. More of the mass here. There we go. Because we're all on the shadow side, see? And any kind of shadow would come right up here to the rock. As a matter of fact, you can see that rock. This is all real good shadow right down like that. And that rock, let's get some of that uh, medium beige right into some of that green. Maybe a touch of yellow. A little different color. And just drag that edge. Very broken. See how that nice broken color comes when those acrylics dry up? That's what I like there push that right up like that we can you can put those little dips and swirls and sways in there you know like the, you see in the photo some of the or you can just uh, add an idea of it and move on like I'm gonna do so I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time in there because if the painting is coming along pretty good it's got a a really good artistic look to it um, and you know it's it's kind of hitting the photo to where I wanted to go but uh, it's still artistic and it's uh, you know we're doing it pretty quickly here so we're what just an hour and a little over an hour and ten minutes or so right around there into the painting that's not too bad um, I'm going to adjust some values now I'm going to um, come up here my back let's go back to a slightly larger brush I'm going to adjust some of my water value so I can go paint my little figure in there. And um, we were slightly violet, so blue and violet in this color. I want to get the colors a little closer, a little gray, some burnt sienna in there grays it really well. You can just take gray from the rocks is one way to do it. Um, and uh, let me see where I am real close to that color. I'm greener than that color, still a little more violet. And I'm a little, I'm right about the right value, which means I should go up a bit. So let's try, and let's also push off some more blue here, blue violet here. Model this up because I don't want to, you know, because I don't want to paint this. Um, and it just modeled into my brush. I want to go back and forth. Let's add some water to this so it's a little thin and I'm just gonna drag it. See when you add a lot of white you can get opaque real quick and uh, so I, I'm generally what I'll do is I'll push it off when I'm painting pure acrylic. I'll push it off with a with a paper towel and see then you'll get the highs and lows there of some of that color and I don't need to when I'm painting like this I don't need to keep it wet. Now I've showed you in other landscapes, you know, how I keep everything really wet. And if you like that, and if you, you know, if that's the way you want to paint, then go ahead and put on a coat of extender, or you can even use open medium. Some of the landscapes I showed you, put in open medium and extender together, and then you can go in there and swirl that all around. Um, but this works really nice as well. and. It's nice as an artist to try all different kinds of things. So I don't always paint wet into wet. I, I like sometimes dry. And so even like when I'll put that in there and that's a bit heavy, see? Then what I'll do is I'll just come in with some of my blue and break that up immediately like that with a, with a stroke, a mark. And then along that edge, let's just take a little green and burnt sienna, maybe a touch of blue. Right, just modeled in my brush. It's not real marked up into my brush. And pull that edge right there and just kind of push those around a bit. See, and I get that color, that movement of that. And that'll give me, give me a nice place for some rapids. I'll come back and just drag the brush. And so it's learning pressure and dragging and, you know, varying those colors. and. And stuff so you don't have to 
you know, you don't have to uh, paint wet into wet. So many like to think, and, and I did too for so many years, I, I have to keep it wet. I got to be able to work the colors and soften it out. No, you don't. When you're a tone painter like I am, you make the color here and put it in, you know. And you know, a simple way to look at it, like I try to explain to my students is, how long does it take you to blend white into white? Well, you don't have to because the tones are so close. So you only have to worry about blending if you're using the wrong colors, if they're too far apart in value. That's why you see me referencing my value scale all the time. If they're too far apart in value, then you've got to keep it wet so you can make those intermediate values. But if I'm worried, if I'm looking at getting my values correct, I don't need to... Uh, worry about blending. Now see, I like that kind of movement that's in there. And I'll look at that edge. So I put that edge in there. And I may want to have just maybe a bit more blue burnt sienna. Slightly, slightly darker. And just come right along that edge like that. See? One stroke. And I've softened that, that look in there. Let's put some violets in. So this is another wonderful, wonderful way to paint water. And it can do some really realistic water if you don't paint it too much. Problem is, so many times we paint too much <laughs> there. But it uh, gives you some nice looks here. Just like that. Okay. And uh, let's take... And uh, I like to do this. And I'll, I'll just take wet color here, some water. And just drag that edge, see? Even drag what I've done before there, seeing that just puts those little tone. Now that's all dry, and so then I get those highs and lows, and that's what softens the edge of that water. And uh, that's how I like to do it. And I'll push some of that right down in here. So I'm dragging, dragging the color there. You know, the Dutch, the masters, they used more techniques like this than blending, even though they painted in oils. They used a lot of scumbling techniques, layering upon layering upon layering. Let's put some of that warm color that we see right up here by the dog as it's heading a bit to that shoreline. I'm going to have to redo my dog in there a bit. There. Maybe a bit more of that yellow burnt sienna here. I'll work that right in here. Let's change that tone a bit. A bit more burnt sienna, maybe a touch of blue as I'm heading out into those blues. See, that's this beautiful. Just put that right on the edge. Just drag that out a bit. And you start to make almost the impression of these shallows in there. See, you're capturing some of the shallows. Because see, look at the little light sparks and stuff there. That isn't blended color. There's no blending in there. You know, you could take the darks back this way and get a little closer to what you see in that photo, pulling back like that. The uh, thing is, don't paint too much. and But they're not blended. Those aren't blended tones. That's just getting your colors correct and making little marks, you know. So, yeah, and they'll be uh, actually coming down this way will be the reflection. Even though it's in the shadow, there'll be a slight reflection of that man there in the water which we will do and this little dog I added so there you don't see a reflection in there so I added this little dog because I like to go fishing with my dogs and sometimes they're in the water too much and they scare all the fish but that's okay I enjoy the day with my dogs I'm there to enjoy the day with my dogs and so we'll push that in okay and um yeah, let's put some of the movement here. So here's my lights. Now, this is where you may want to add a little extender so to keep your colors wet here for a moment. It's just so you don't have to constantly redo stuff. I, you know, that's that's up to you and I will, I don't mind to do it. But if you, you know, just kind of tap it like this, you don't want to get it real melted. See, that's water, see? As long as you don't, uh, you know, uh, mix it too much that's water you see now you put that on and see look at the there back over here there's some more light white water back up over here and 
I always, like I, I tell you in so many of my paintings, I paint too much and then I take out what I don't like. So I'm going to put on too much here and then I'm going to negative paint back through it and change the tone a bit. Maybe add a bit of blue into there. So you get some different colors here. Out like that. Just a bit, okay. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean that color out of my brush for just a second. I'm going to go to a violet tone, a lighter violet. Just going to make this slightly lighter violet. Maybe some of these other colors in here. And what I'm going to do is just have a little bit of it in my brush. And I'm going to paint back out what I don't want. So see, I'll push, I'll wipe my brush, push here. I like that, so I'll paint that right up into the motion that I want that to have there. He's going to be fishing this little riffle here. So let's actually get a little darker color. Bring that riffle down like this here. Right down little bit of color movement there right in there and so you can go light or dark depending on how much contrast you want I'm bringing this coming down slightly this is and just tapping and bringing it right in there this is really fun <laughs> I just love this part of the painting. There were so many years I couldn't do this. I would get so stressed about moving water. And it is and it is when you're a young painter. Don't worry. It, it gets better after about, you know, two or 3,000 paintings. <laughs> it gets better. No, it does, guys. It really does. It just takes practice. But I used to stress on water so much. And now, because I always thought, oh, I had to paint exactly what I see in the photo. No, you don't. Now, see how I just break that edge. That's all I want to do is take this lower value, break that edge, take out some of that highs and lows of that water there. See? And I'm just going right between the two colors that I have, just tapping through there. And, yeah, that's what's setting that look of that water in there, see? And works so easy here there we go let's push some of that right back up there some of that color oh there's a big rock back there i gotta paint gotta put in you can come back and put some more light in you can edge with more white and really get those light riffles in there you know, just, this is what I like to do is I'll, I'll edge or with it. See, I can roll over and into that white if I want or push it back out. This has a little phthalo in it, so it's kind of neat. Just light, light butterfly. Just imagine your little butterfly just touching that. You can push or you can take out there. I took out too much, so I get to do that again. I like kind of like that little bit of light right there. A bit more that's in the painting. So if you want, if you want to get it closer to that shadowy kind of thing that there, it's in the painting. Let's take our blue and some violet, push that in our brush, pin swipe it so there's just a little bit of it. Paint down into it from the shadow to the light, and take out what you don't need. And now you've got you know, just what you want on there. You can tap through a bit to make it more bubbly there. And uh, yeah, that works. Let's um, quickly put that little gray rock on here. Right back there. Maybe another, just take some gray. That's just a real quick little gray. Let's go back to my smaller brush here. Little burnt sienna blue, nice gray. Put in the shadow or the receding tone there, right along the water. Then we'll take some blue and burnt sienna some more, or you could use red, you know, depending on uh, how much contrast. And you want to change that tone up too, you know. Put a bit of the shadow in there like that. And then I usually come back and hit those tones again. Right back in. 
there. Let's put that lighter plane of that rock. So a bit more light, just model up some of your browns and drag that light there. My thing is, you know, that's another left brain thing that I'll start to do. I'll start to make both those rocks the same size. So I gotta be careful. I'm gonna increase the size of this one. I'll just start doing that. This is a habit that I have, even, you know, like I tend to make things even. So it's a habit that I have to watch. So I'm gonna make that one a bit bigger here. That's good. And uh, get some of that gray in there. Maybe that one could be a bit sh uh, smaller here. And get back to just a bit of that shadow there. Okay. Yeah, that'll work, and I'll, I'll paint up some more in there. The dog is just going to really be dark, and that little bit of light that you see in him and stuff there. But um, I'm going to come in, take a smaller little filbert here. You can use a fil. You've seen me use before. I've used filberts. I've used small flats. I generally don't use rounds, but you can. I'm going to set this in here. I'm going to take some medium beige. Um, I'm going to do the, I'm going to paint, when I paint the figure, like you see what I've done before, I paint the light, the dark of the figure, and then I come back and paint half tones and little touches to it. But I first break the figure out to the lightest color and uh, that, that you see, so that will probably be burnt sienna, a little bit of light right here. So I'm going to end, I'm going to start out like his hat up here, lighter than what it might end up uh, being here. And we'll just push up. A bit of that and he has his his uh, fishing vest here which will come up and I'm, I try to do it as simplistic as possible when I paint little figures like this so I break them down into like strokes and touches of, of colors so there'll be a light touch right here which is the light side of his little vest here and uh, so I try to break it up pretty simple so there is slightly lighter, I'm going to wipe my brush, pick up a bit more white, slightly lighter right along his collar there. So you get that little light struck, which stroke, which you see there. There's going to be darks in there, but I don't go into that yet. Let's go uh, the blue and some, a touch of the red, which will gray that right on down. Make a nice dark color that we can use here onto his pants and we'll go uh, it's, that's reading just a bit uh, blue so I'm going to add a touch more red to it so with the figures here I'll paint them a couple times with the color going through maybe just a touch of the lighter little gray just into the front but you know I generally just break that up so it still stays very dark and he has it, he's walking out, he has his leg um, kind of bent, and uh, that that actually might not be too bad. It's a little bit more of a movement here, if we go ahead and do that. So this leg would come out and then back like that, just a bit, like he's walking. We'll go back, and so then what I do is I start breaking it up a bit more I'll start looking for more and and I'll slowly get darker and and uh, put in little touches just little marks of color so I see a little shadow color right there onto his vest that pulls down and I do no blending whatsoever no softening or blending whatsoever um, his shirt there is dark but it reads just a little bit red so let's drop that in right here and his arm is bent just a bit. He'll hold his, uh, he'll hold the um, uh, fishing pole there. And then we'll, then we just come back and start adding little marks of color back and forth, lights. 
and looking for angles and stuff. So see, I'll come back and like I'll stroke his back here. So see, in that little mark I just put on with the back, I took out some of the shadow. But I do that on purpose. I mean, and I'll come back and I'll push the shadow back in. But this time I'll use maybe a horizontal stroke that's a little different than what I did before. And you see it starts to break up some of that, um, you know, some of the, the, the look of him when he's there. Let me... Uh, Take this back up here for a second, and uh, why don't we do this with the magic of cameras here, bring this in just a bit more, whoops, that's the wrong way, we'll come in just a bit closer here, so you can see some of that, so um, yeah, and I'll look for, I'll take some of this dark, maybe brown here, and just give the impression of a mark there for his for his boots. You don't need to do that much. Now he'll have a shadow here to the back side of his hat because you'll have a light and dark and you know we'll maybe make that a bit more brown to put just a just a hint of like a hair color or something like that. Then I'll come through back with that lighter tan and I'll hit the front light of his hat. Sometimes I'll leave it just as a quick little mark. Sometimes I do that as I'll take a vertical, then a real quick poof, horizontal, and then that's, you know, that's almost good enough. I'll probably take just a bit of light, just a touch. So no blending whatsoever. It's all tone painting, little marks of color, because he's so darn small. I mean, this whole area I'm painting here is smaller than my fingernail, so it's just a small little area. You might take a, you know, burnt sienna and some white here makes a nice little flesh color. You can add some yellow to it to, and just make a nice little flesh color. You, you don't see that much. You see just a tiny little mark here of his face color right there. Boom, just a tiny little mark, okay? And uh, then I'll come back through again, looking through, like here's some brown, uh, some burnt sienna and some dark, maybe add just a mark or two right up here to the front of his vest. Maybe there's a shadow mark underneath that light part of his vest. And uh, I'll pull some down through here just a bit so that he, um, and so I work those lines several times. That's what gives you the the true interest to them here. And I try to start I start thinking smaller, smaller. Maybe change the tone a little bit. Put a little bit of light yellow on that his back there. You know, just a just a touch of that, like right up here. You know, and uh, that's the bit. Now we'll uh, take some of that. We did his pants kind of a light gray here of this, maybe just a touch of light here, just slightly lighter. I hit the angle for like the back of his pants there, and then maybe uh, we'll we'll play artistic license here and lighten up a bit more, maybe the front of his leg there, maybe even a touch more. Just think of where that light's gonna hit. And so sometimes, you know, it'll hit here on the top leg more so than the the, the, the back edge trailing there. But um, I sometimes, you know, the artists, we're artists, and we'll take and we will uh, expand those colors a bit. You know, we will do a little more than what you see. So I'll do that, maybe put just a touch of that light there for his hand, and I'll break up edges we have some of this light that can maybe hit just a touch there onto his um, you know onto his uh, shirt there but you can see just real quick painting like this this just does so much I'll take some of these grays and I'm just gonna pull down right into that vest there one more time maybe uh, and this is what I'll do. I'll go back and forth several times with the colors till I get him closer to what I like here. And I'll get a few tones in there, see? And I paint too much, and then I take down. 
And finally, after back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, get him the way I like it. So you can see in there, he's coming out about the same amount on that camera. About the same amount, but I could have a, a bit more to him. Just real simple little figures. He's just, I just, I used to regret, you know, dread painting little figures. I was like, oh God, how do you do that stuff? And uh, now I like it. And so I'm going to take some of this gray, blue gray. See, on, at, as I finish up, you know, I'll take some of the negative paint, some of this rock around him to make some areas, the parts of his hat a little better here. You know, I'll do it with the, now I got that brim at slightly the wrong angle compared to what he's doing there. And his head, it looks like Hoss Cartwright here. It's a little too rounded at the top. We want to give him more of a Australian hat. Here we go. We'll take the burnt sienna and light here. And, uh, touch in and see this is kind of a big brush to do this but you can I like to do that get this that edge and it's uh, you know more impressionistic that's what I like and then I'll pull that angle this time down slightly that's a better angle for him right there pam fishing the riffle now that Shoulder, can you so you can see, even though he's a little figure, I'll put some work into him. I'll push that back, push that light edge up there just a touch lighter. This front corner now, and as you build paint on it, sometimes it gets hard to paint there. So, um, and you know, because you get so much paint on, you gotta let it dry. I have just that little bit here, and then I'm gonna. Call him here. You just take this out. This will arch his back a bit more. I'll do it with the water, the color of the water, which we still have to put a bit. You know, I want to come back in here, add some more going on. But see, I use the negative painting of like the water and stuff like that to, uh, to uh, you know fix him up and stuff. And so you can see I need to get some more of the water, just a touch lighter, I think. Um, a few more things. Water a little bit lighter. That's better. See, I like that where it blurs those edges. There. That's better. And I'll, I'll do little touches like onto his hat here. Little touches of light even though he's kind of in the shadow here. And then we'll just use the, uh, this is a little soon for this because I still want to put some edges and stuff in there. But we'll put his pole in here and I'll end up, I, I want to do it very broken. And I'll use just a chisel edge here. And if I get too much or too much shows up and stuff, then I will, um, I will, uh, Paint it out with the water. Let's just try to do it just a little bit here. There, like that. And so the other thing that you can do too when you're working a small line like that, since everything else is dry, just take your, your brush now with some water and lift back up into that pole. And that'll help you set the line of what it is that he's doing here. And you can actually scrub back here in and pick up that that uh, color a bit here so it starts to thin it out more to a line but I like you know for me I like to do it with scrub back with some of the water the color of the water because that breaks the line just a bit and I really like the broken lines and color and painting here so we'll scrub back just a bit and I'll, you see, I'll break that line, just touch it, makes it more, you know, more, uh, instead of being a perfect line, it makes it more casual there. And then put his little, and the little things make a difference here. So let's just take the um, burnt sienna. 
and some white and put his hand and stuff right back on top here. So, and I'll probably come through and just fix up his, uh, his hat and his face. There you go. It picks up his hat and his face there one more little time. And, uh, but I've got to let it really dry really well. And I want to get, you know, I, he comes off really well right there, which means I've got to get a touch more light right up around him up here in this area. And I'll thin this out, thin out some of my grays that I used here with some water. And let's back paint up. I want him to come off a bit more like we're seeing in that photo which means do it again. Do those colors again so he'll start to come off a bit. I'm a bit green, I could be a touch more violet. But this is what I'll do now is I'll start to refine this and I'm gonna come back through some of my colors, some of my edges here again, one more time. And uh, you know, maybe put another 20, 30 minutes into the painting here, just fixing up some of that little stuff, doing the same thing, dragging the edges, doing that kind of stuff added in some of that light, and we'll come back, take a final look at it, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Hi, everyone, welcome back. Well, I've been working on it for about 20 minutes, so I figured that the entire painting here is gonna take about two, two and a half hours, somewhere around there, is a, is a good is a good call for this type of painting. Um, and I can put a little bit more. What I did was I was just working on some of these bushes here. I uh, put in the dog simply there. I'll probably maybe add just a little bit more. Um, I added just a little more color in through here, a little more color in through there, and I'll probably bring this out one more time. But I just wanted to show you, I, I show you this in the Westerns. If you really want to go to see some really fun ways to do prairie and all that kind of stuff, go watch those Western videos. But we can use things like this. This is an inch and a half, just a little... Uh, a china bristle cheapy brush and you just take some of your yellows and your greens you don't mix them up real well and sometimes I use the corner sometimes I, I, I spread these out so you can get a, a more of a you know a nice loose airy feeling and I just use the edges of this just sometimes roll them push them to, to uh, this will give you some of the bushes some of the edges just nice casual way quick way or you can go in and paint you know leaves and all that kind of stuff but this for painting wise, this can give you a real nice, uh, emulate some nice bushes and, uh, you know, maybe add some, model up some more green as you come back here. So the color changes a little bit. You don't need very much, just real light pressure. Don't do too much. It's it's really a lot of fun. And that can, uh, really a lot of fun can be dangerous because you do too much, okay? But uh, yeah, and change the colors out. And if you get too much, you can take some green, some burnt sienna like that, just push it into your brush and push back in and take some of that out, see? And this this can give some nice movement into shadows. It's just a real fun kind of way because it's it doesn't repeat. And that's the big thing is, you know, a lot of painters will, will repeat, you know, the, their stroke and that repetition can be, in a painting like this, especially in a casual edge painting like this, it can be a little distracting, okay? Anyway, so there you go. And then I went and uh, grabbed this frame for it to, just to see what that would uh, look like into a frame. And I think I like the colors and everything of this frame. It's just uh, one that I picked up over at Hobby Lobby for uh, like 10 bucks. So it was on, you get their frame sale, normally 20, you get it on for less. I think that'll, that'll look pretty nice. I, I do though want to put just one more real quick, just real quick, um, touch of that, uh, the, the lighter grays and some burnt, and this is when I really like my acrylic paints where they've been out for several hours. I've had the heat on here because it's eight degrees outside and, uh, you know, they're really just kind of, kind of, you know, tacky and great, and I love that. And I'll just hit a couple of areas like that, put that nice warm, like it's just hitting the light there a bit. Yeah, and see, it's, it's starting to jump off, and I look at that just as much as the other one. Okay, there you go. Thanks very much for joining me on the painting today, and uh, make sure 
you click like that really helps the video guys if you if you click like or leave a comment there if you have a question just leave a question I'll try to get to that those of you that are uh, into our membership I'll put the reference photo and my a nice close-up photo of, of my finished one here and um, into the uh, membership area also into the membership I have a floral coming tomorrow uh, actually two of them a tray and another one and so watch for those those of you members watch for those they'll be in your membership um, in the membership video thing so we're going to continue some of our floral studies over there okay all right guys hope you enjoyed it I had a great time with you and I'll see you uh, on the next one okay thanks a lot bye bye